So what I was going to say was it, it, that's advice that I wish someone had told me. And if I could go back and, and talk to my younger self, that would be the advice I would get. Um, but that's kind of why I ended up in New York. Um, because I realized that I needed to see, to see that, see the industry. Um, I don't know necessarily now in 2023, if, if that holds true, I mean, New York is still a capital for advertising and media and things like that, uh -huh. but, um, but it's, it's, a, it's a different market than it was when I started out. Um, so but in a, but not to you know stray too far off the um what I was gonna what I meant is that uh, yeah that's the um advice I I wish someone had given me because <laughs> I mean I you know it, I was just you know trying to trying to figure this thing out yeah, yeah. no I think <clears throat> some I think for people who would like to go into photography instead of worrying this is just my personal like take on it instead of like knowing that you don't have to go to college to have that career is great advice I think because you know some people are would fixate over like well which what should I go into what should I study if I want to pursue this but if I, knowing that you don't actually have to go to college is is I mean, still, I think people, you know, do what they would want to do. I'm just saying, knowing that you don't have to is also just a great piece of advice. Well, so when I was learning photography, there was a lot of different, there there was a lot of different things that you could do within photography. So, mm -hmm. you know, because it was still chemical based, um, you know, you could go be a lab technician, you, you know, there, it was a much more technical craft when I learned it. Mm -hmm. Um, and therefore, you know, you had, uh, a, there was just a lot of different avenues you could go down. And it also meant that it really meant you, you needed to go to school because there was so much chemistry and mathematics, um, involved with, with all facets of it. Yeah. That that aren't anymore. I mean, you know, they're the lens lens and understand and understanding how lenses work, um, you know, is still pretty technical and it's something that, you know, is is um hasn't changed even though we're using uh digital technology. Mm -hmm. But the chemistry aspect is gone. You it know, is. For, for, yeah, at least from a commercial standpoint. I mean, if you wanted to shoot film and process your own film, then, you know, you can probably watch a YouTube video on it. But mm -hmm. when I was starting, that was the only thing that you did. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think you can, you can get a, you can start off a lot easier now, technically with photography without having to have gone through what I did um, to learn it. Um, mm -hmm. And the big thing too, is that like, you know, you if you, you should working for other photographers it, you know is just as um is, is informative as any college program will be so you learn a lot if you you know if you decide to kind of apprentice uh, as an assistant for a photographer and so those that's another option to go you know to to learn the industry or learn, you know, things about photography these days than actually going to college. I'm not, don't get me wrong. I'm nothing against college. I have a yeah. master's. Oh, I, nice. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bad mouth in college. It's just, you know, having, I taught photography for a long time and, yeah. and it's, it's, I haven't taught in like, uh, going on like, I've been in a classroom in like, I think seven years. Uh -huh. And you know, these days when I, when I think about what I do and w like what somebody wanting to learn and go into my profession, like should do, um, I mean, I'm kind of like, is, 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 is it even necessary for them? You know, yeah. I mean, cause you know, if you understand light and composition, I mean, that's, 
that's what a photograph is. So if you can, if you know how to work with light, see, see it more than anything and understand how to, you know, make a good composition, you know, I mean, the, the camera can kind of do a lot, a lot of other things for you, you know, mm -hmm. now. So yeah, I don't know. I think that's great. I like, mean, um, I think I've, I mean, I've seen like photographers on like social media who don't even use like cameras, like they just use like their cell phone and like, yeah. like anything, like considering that, say, what did you say? Like 20 ish years ago, it was fully film. And now it's, oh, I have a phone in my back pocket. We'll use that type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I've taken great pictures of my iPhone. I mean, my mm -hmm. iPhone takes amazing pictures. And, you know, the old saying goes, you know, the best camera is the one you have with you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And then, you know, like when I was in school, um, we, you know, we would like the first three classes were like these super technical classes, mm -hmm. film processing, all that. And then once you learned all that, you were given a plastic camera that only had like one shutter speed and one aperture and, and it had light leaks in it. It was just, it, and it, it was, it was, it was cheap. It was like a $20 camera. Yeah. And it was like, okay, you, now you, your head's been packed with all this information, throw it all away. Cause you're going to go use this thing that none of that applies because it's a technically, you know, an inferior thing. Now just go be creative with photography. And, you know, so, so there was that, like, in, if there's, you know, that was one good thing about school is the yin and the yang there is that like, you know, here's this like very disciplined idea of how you do something. And then we're going to like, you know, throw you this, that's mm -hmm. going to completely skew everything we just taught you. It's going to so. completely throw you off, but you got to yeah. figure it out. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, cause, and it's all about like, you know, just at the end of the day, it's about your creativity, not the tool. The tools, the tools will make your cre being creative easier, but they don't make you more creative. Yeah. Yeah, I, I fully, I, I agree. I think that that, I, I love that they, <clears throat> sorry. Um, the fact that they teach you all of this and then just completely throw you a curveball and just like, okay, now, Go figure this out. Yeah. It's a great yeah. learning tool. Okay. Yeah. So what inspired you to document the people that you call your brothers and sisters with ICG Local 600 during the pandemic? Oh, why did I do that project? Mm -hmm. Like what compelled you, what inspired you to document that? So, so that all started because they like, during during the like the pandemic they mm -hmm. like productions were shut down for i don't know six months march to september i think is about is correct and i was working the whole time actually because i would i i just went and was doing like news coverage work mm -hmm. uh, so i never really stopped but like my my reasoning was this. So the, the union was asking the still photographers to do these like day in the life series about themselves. What are you doing? And they wanted you to document it. And I was like, man, I am not doing that. Like, <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I just don't want to, I don't, I, I like being behind the camera, not in front of it. And yeah. And I wasn't interested in like showing like, you know, my life. Like, I don't like, I've never been into like self portraits or anything like that. So I was like, what could I do? Uh, and it just kind of, you know, having done like editorial stories for a long time, I was just like, well, let's just, you know, go see what other people are doing. I want to see what they're doing. And <clears throat> And that, that's, that was the whole idea is like, what have you been doing? Like with this time off, how, you know, it can, it could be, um, you know, a, it, it could be an activity. Um, it could be a mood, you know, 
I just want to like, you know, tell a story with a single photograph. Yeah. And some of the things were funny. Um, some of them were kind of somber, melancholy. Um, you know, one of them we did like during uh, my my friend Calvin, we did that like um, we shot his the day um, that they had the procession down Auburn Avenue for um, uh, when uh, John Lewis passed. So mm -hmm. we went down there. I shot him in front of the mural. Um, you know, it was just that was a really fun project. I mean, I like absolutely loved it. Um, and uh, yeah, but that was the the impetus. You know, it's a really simple idea, and it, it you know it's just like I'm gonna let these people show me, you know, who they are and what they're doing. And that yeah. was that was the, you know, and you know, hopefully, you know, it makes for an interesting photo. Um, uh, you know, the great thing is that a lot of people I knew. So I kind of like pitched some ideas, like, you know, I wanted stuff that, I, cause I wanted to kind of hit like a, a, when you saw them as a group, you know, like everything kind of like looked a little different. So, you know, we had like the family guy who's mm -hmm. cooped up with his kids and kind of losing his mind. So I took that shot and it's like, it's his kid, like, shooting the the sprinkler like right into his face <laughs> while, while everybody while his neighbors and his wife are like horrified around him and I'm just like that you know so you know that put a little levity in there um uh yeah I mean it was just you know trying to do a variety of, of you know of, of things and also too because it was going to get published you know mm -hmm. make sure everybody looked good you know that it was a cool shot because yeah. everybody was a camera person you know so they wanted to look cool because it was going to be in our like um our union kind of like bulletin so mm -hmm. but, it, but that one yeah I mean it, it wasn't like a big com like convoluted idea it was pretty simple but it was born out of like I'm not photographing myself <laughs> no, I'm not doing that <laughs> yeah it, and, and they but they liked the idea and they really liked the final product so, and it had a really great, um, um, like write up, uh -huh. um, like story line. Um, I, 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 I treated it as like a, like, like if I shot like a magazine story. So, you know, I had a, a whole kind of, uh, written description of what the project was about. Um, and I, um, kind of paired it with David Bowie's space oddity, you uh -huh. know, is like, you know, um, because, um, one of the um, women I photographed, Hilda, like during um, while I was photographing. Oh yeah, I got it. That was the other thing too. Was I had everybody fill out a questionnaire for me, okay. um, and I pulled a few ideas from it. Um, and she she said, um, like she felt like an astronaut, hmm. like during the pandemic. Uh -huh. And so I kind of used the. Um, uh like space oddity concept in there you know when I was writing about it so uh yeah I mean it was man that was a project I could have kept on shooting um you know one of the one of the problems with it was um you know we were kind everybody this is like summer 2020 so everybody's kind of a little iffy-ish on like how do we do this do we have to wear masks so getting people on board, you know, took a while, uh -huh. uh, but, you know, I, yeah, I could have, that, that was something I would have kept doing. I mean, it was just, it was a really fun project. So it, it, I looked at the, I was uh, going through your website, looking at pictures and the pictures that you shot for the pandemic, those were just, one of my favorites was, uh, I can't remember her name, but she had like a bunch of puzzles. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And she was, uh, she was, she's a photo publicist and she's really sweet. Her name is, uh, oh man, I'm, I'm oh God, I'm Cindy. That, okay. And, and um, she was, uh, she was really, really tough because she was worried about, she's in publicity. So she didn't want to look bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, this is so cool. Cause I just asked her like, what have you been doing? And she was like, I've been doing a lot of puzzles. Like, well, let's do that. Cause I wanted it to be honest too, you know? Yeah. So, 
But no, I loved that shop. And it and I had to, me and a few people had to convince her like, no, this is, it's good. Trust us. It's, yeah. People are going to like it, you know? And she, we finally got her to come around on that. So. And it came but, out to be yeah. an incredible shop. Thank you. And I mean, that was just such a, a fun project. And it was just like, there was so much going on during then. I mean, and if you notice on the side, I, I covered the protests and the riots that were going on concurrently, uh, you know, when I was shooting that. And I just felt like that I was so glad to do that because, man, that time was super heavy. It was. And, you know, like, life's just not, life's not that heavy, like, no. all the time. Yeah. And, and with some levity, you need to be able to find the levity in those moments, you know, mm -hmm. it's cause we, cause you know, I mean, I was documenting them during a, a, a traumatic and uncertain moment in time and trying to find humanity back, you know, in that I thought was important um, because I don't know, I mean, that's why I like, you know, I love Monty Python. You know, I, I yeah. still believe I like the absurd and and you know, even in the worst of, of situations, it's all kind of absurd to me. And I and I wanted to make sure not to lose um a positivity and a sense of humor during you know a have like a pretty heavy moment in not only our country's history, but the world's history. Um, you know uh you know one of the more heavy moments in my own time of being on this earth so mm -hmm. I think that's why I really enjoyed that because it was kind of like a release valve for a, a really odd odd moment in in time yeah so I'm glad you liked them um I I I, I look back on that work very fondly I, I love the protest work because I still, those are moments that are going to stick with you the rest of your life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, I still remember the night that it happened. Like, I remember all the news coverage, watching all of the live streams of like, 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 I remember a flaming trash can went through a window of a, a work, of a bit, like an office. And I was just like, this is insane. Like it was crazy, but that is, that was a crazy time. Yeah. And, you know, I was living in Midtown during that. So it was kind of happening out of my window. So, um, you know, there was just, there was, regardless if I was like shooting it to get paid or not, you were I, living was gonna, in it. I was going to photograph this, you know, one yeah. way or the other. Um, because it was just, it was, it was just that it, that was just happening outside of my window. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, again, like it's one of those things where it's just like, wow, man, I, I photographed history right there. Good. Yeah. Um, and I, and, you know, I feel lucky because of that, because a lot of people never get to document anything that was like, like a true moment, you know, like a moment that's like, we're going to remember that, um, yeah. that written about and uh you know maybe and maybe when it is written about some of my images accompany that you know the written word um who knows um at the time they did um uh, i'm talking about more like when we you know when they really look back on 2020 because um you know when it comes to like events like the further out you get the more the more insight comes along to it and I you know think that um uh you know to have been able to 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 bear witness was you know pretty amazing um mm -hmm. uh, because yeah I mean like I mean that's it makes this job interesting it also means that like you know you're just tired <laughs> <laughs> I mean god that was a that was a crazy two weeks it was it was insane yeah I mean you know, God, I got tear gassed twice. Um, mm. It was just, yeah, it was just wild. Um, but, you know, like, I mean, I've, I've been covering things like that, like, like the, um, like Confederate rallies out in Stone Mountain. So it wasn't like the first, it wasn't, it definitely wasn't the first time I'd been in, like, in, in a situation like that. But, 
that one had like so much more gravity. Like it, like even when I remember photographing um, uh, like the Iraq war protests in New York, like this just had a real different vibe um, than anything else I'd ever been in. Um, yeah. And I don't know how, I, I, I think it's a, it, it was a culmination of a lot of things, um, mm -hmm. you know, happening all at once. I, you know, the pandemic lockdown playing very much into it. And, um, but it was unlike anything I'd ever covered. Um, and um, I'm glad I got the opportunity. So it's an it makes going working on a film set. It, like, it, 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 just, it makes you, makes you, uh, I don't know, you, you know, you just, it puts some things in perspective. How about that? You I know? can imagine. It also makes you realize like, well, I, I mean, I did that. <laughs> like I can kind of do anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's nothing that's like, you know, gonna, gonna rattle me at this point. So. Yeah. Those were an insane two weeks. Those are th that 2020, I was thinking about it the other day and just the whole year of 2020 when they read about it, like in schools and like the next like 30 years, like when kids have to go back and look over that in like history class, it's going to take a, a hot minute to go through that year yeah I mean I I mean I think that it's going to take a while to kind of process like what all that meant you know and I yeah. and I hope that as we you know get further away from it that people's feelings soften enough where they can kind of see where mistakes were made on on both sides you know like you know people that i know that are so anti vax and all that yeah i hope that as we get further away from that that they can kind of people that maybe they can appreciate that that they maybe got caught up in 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 a like a hyper hysteria you know um i i hope i mean cuz i felt i i feel like that it 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 created a lot of hard feelings Mm -hmm. um that uh that's been un uh, been an unfortunate byproduct of of 2020 so um but i i think yeah like when they have to write about it um it's gonna be interesting to see as someone who lived as you know through that period of time it'll be interesting to see how how history uh, records it yeah so yeah it's definitely gonna be interesting like the history books talking about what happened yeah yeah